Hey everybody. Today I'm doing some power supply work. And here we have this PCB. This power supply PCB was actually pulled from a Cars IT 480 watt unit, which obviously by looking at this board, it's kind of obvious it can't do 480 watts. And it's funny, there's the actual original casing to this thing. It's up there on my wall. Kind of made a um, sort of an air filter out of it, but anyways. There was ratings on the thing. It says it can do 17 amps on the 12 volt rail, um, 45 amps on the plus 5, 30 amps on the 3.3. Obviously, it's like an outdated design. And it even has a minus 5 volt rail, which is pretty much ancient. But this thing here, although it's way overrated, it's not terrible. And let me explain why. Not all cheap power supplies are absolutely just terrible. I mean, just about every single cheap power supply needs some sort of mod to make it where it would work better. And I've already started on this thing quite some time ago. First thing I did to this guy was I added into long filter coils. You know, I had the jumpers installed instead of these, so I put these in. These two actually came out of a best tank power supply. Another thing I did was install these two little X capacitors, I mean these Y capacitors, the little blue caps. Those weren't there. So basically this thing pretty much had no EMI filtering at all. And I took out one of the capacitors because I was desperate for a 2200 microfarad 16 volt cap. So I got to reinstall a new capacitor there. So we're going to explain what I'm going to be doing to this thing today. I don't have too much left to do for it. Though I am going to do a few things. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those four diodes and install a rectifier bridge. And next thing I'm going to do is, is set up a fan, fan speed controller. Here it is right here. This is a little, little add-on board that came out of another power supply. You simply plug it into the um, 12 volt fan I put on the power supply board. And it has you know, the circuitry to control the speed of the fan based on temperature. There's a little green thermistor right there. And basically this thing bolts onto the secondary side heatsink. Which all I need to do is find a screw and a bolt and install it. And basically, it would go installed something like, let's say, like this here. It would just mount onto the PCB like that. And you'd run a screw through the, um, the slot in the heatsink. And this um, power supply board was intended for a case with a fan that blows down across the board. Like that there. And obviously that case there was a piece of junk. It was very flimsy. So that's why I used it as like an air freshener. <laughs> Here's a much better case I have for this. And the board fits right up to these screw holes. So that's good. This little... AC plug already has an X cap installed, that's good. I'm going to install a second one here where it has a spot for one. Now funny thing to note is this um, PCB even has um, holes for a PFC coil. Now of course what they did from the factory was solder over the, the gap between those two holes right there because they didn't want to install a um, PFC coil. Now I have some PFC coils but they have three wires on there and I don't know exactly sure for sure how to wire those up and I won't take my chances on this thing because obviously that's part of the high voltage circuit where your AC runs through it actually um, so basically your AC goes in through here it goes to the fuse goes to these two guys and you got the X caps there going to the ground it goes across through here and here's your rectification where it gets rectified to DC and basically you have these two filtering capacitors here and then you have your primary side transistors there, your switching transistors that's hence the name switch mode power supply and you got your main transformer there 5 volt standby transformer here I believe and a not in the um, isolation transformer here and then it goes through the process of getting rectified again back to full DC and then it gets cleaned up and sent to your computer. That's just 
kind of a nutshell how a um, power supply works. But anyways, I forgot to mention, one thing that this power supply has, this cheap power supply has that you will rarely ever see on a cheap power supply, is this right here. Let me get you a flashlight so you can see that better. Notice something. We have two main switching transistors here. But notice there's a hole in the heat sink there where something's missing. That's right, there's a third transistor missing. That would normally be part of your two transistor follow standby circuit, but this power supply doesn't have that. It has the much better IC follow standby design. Basically, this IC here tends to have, you know, these, these ICs versus your two transistor design. These have, you know, better regulation of your follow standby rail along with um, protection such as, like, like let's say, over voltage protection. So, that's definitely a plus here and I know for sure this power supply has, it does not have two transistor follow standby. And that's because when you switch on the switch to the AC going to this thing, there was always like a half second delay between the time you flipped the switch and the light on the motherboard lit up. Which that t that told me for sure that this unit has two trans I mean has um has the IC design. See so yeah, this power supply it's not all that great. I mean it can't do <laughs> obviously what it was rated for. But I could see this thing doing two fifty to three hundred watts okay. I'd say better of a two fifty watt load. So anyways I'm going to go ahead and and do my mods and I'll show you the end result. Okay, everybody just got finished putting this thing back together with the exception of putting in the fan and the cover. I'll show you what I've done to this thing. You can probably see the difference already. Have a bridge rectifier installed, and let me grab the flashlight so you can see that better. I did a separate video on actually how to install the bridge rectifier in such a scenario. Um, basically, I already did mention earlier about how it's done, so you can at least you can see how it's installed. Also installed a yellow X capacitor there next to the coil. Those two coils, as I mentioned, were already there. I installed those in like 2010 or 2011, and there are the Y caps that I put in yesterday. And of course, got the um, AC plug soldered in. Got the uh, the AC lines. Are soldered in, and take it over to the secondary side to show what I've done there. Not too much, but here is that fan controller. It's mounted to the secondary side heat sink. It was not too difficult to mount. It's not on there, nice and snug. So now what to do is plug in the fan and put this thing back together. And we can pretty much call it a done deal. Now another thing I'm going to do. Man, these wires are skinny though. What I'm going to do later on is I'm going to cut this wire right here, these wires. Get rid of these three Molex wires and floppy connector and install. Two SATA connectors. Such as maybe this here. This one actually has two SATA connectors and a Molex. I may actually install that one. I have a number of different um, SATA cable leads I've saved off of other power supplies. Installed that there, this one because it has no SATA connectors. <laughs> kind of funny, it has a 20 plus 4 but no SATA connectors. How ridiculous is that? Now for us to cover back on the case, I want to go ahead and go over this um, the outputs on this thing right quick. As you saw, that um, that bogus slave buff there was <laughs> way off. Basically, in regards to what this thing has for output rectification, the 5 volt rail is rated for 30 amps, but then again, this one has DC to DC conversion for 3.3 volts. So in reality, it's sharing both, this device here is doing both to 5 volt and 3.3 volt rails. I had no idea how much that, um, that DC to DC can do probably more than what this is rated for but the 12 volt rail 
has a 16 amp print notification. I'm looking at the device, I see what appears to be UF or VF 1602CT. So that tells me it's rated for, it's capable of doing around 16 amps there. So I would say this is probably capable of doing probably 250 watts, maybe up to maybe 300 watts. Um, I would generally use this in a computer that's probably, you know, maybe a basic dual core, no video cards, maybe one or two hard drives and one or two optical drives. Something really simple. I mean, this thing has ran simple computers for quite some time. It actually ran the Black Max for a while back in, what, two, I think 2008. Back before I'd done any work to it. So anyways, I'm just going to get that car back on this case and show you how it looks before I power it on. Okay, everybody, I can finally get this thing put back together, and this is how it looks. Now, one thing I'm definitely going to do is I'm going to change out this label, because <laughs> now it's way overrated. Yeah, the power supply of this that was originally in this case was like a 650 watt, something like that, no, 600 watt, and the primary side had um, had a failure. There was cooked resistors on the primary side next to the big caps, and I'm not sure if the primary transistors may have shorted out or, or what happened to it. It wasn't mine, it was friends, and he just gave it to me. And I decided to go ahead and reuse the case to give this um, upgraded cheap thing a new home. So, anyways, um, yeah. In, in, in regards to weight, it's not as heavy as it used to be, but it's not too light either but um one thing that's funny is all this excessive room that's left over in the back where the wires come out because this thing had a crap load of wires in it originally this thing used to have a lot of wires and the fact that this thing here doesn't have as thick a wire gauge in its wiring but anyways I guess we can call this a um an upgrade of a cheap power supply and recasing it into a better case. So anyways, any questions or comments, feel free to ask and thanks for watching.